Hi, I'm Aaron Davlo, and I'm going to show you how to use my After Effects Transforms Exporter script for 3D Studio Max. This script lets you bring animated uh, position, rotation, and scale information from 3D Studio Max via the clipboard into After Effects. Uh, for those of you using a more modern version of 3D Studio Max, you'll know about the compositor link within the state sets. However, this is a quicker and easier way uh, to just quickly get information into After Effects. It also lets you grab static positions and just paste them right into After Effects. All right, let's hop into Max and get started. So this is our basic 3D Studio Max scene that we're going to use. And you can see I have a little bit of animation on here. First off, I have camera animation. And then I also have uh, this teapot, which is uh, transforming, rotating, and scaling. All right. So typically what we're going to need to do to get our camera into After Effects is use an RPF camera. I'm going to go ahead and use LPM to render this out, but you could use state sets or just the regular render dialog. Right now I've split these up into a foreground and background passes. And while this is rendering, I'm just going to tell you about the RPF camera a little bit. In each frame in the RPF file format, it'll save uh, camera information, and After Effects can read this and import it as a camera. Uh, unfortunately, you do need to manually bring over the uh, focal length information, because After Effects doesn't read that. All right, so now that our frames are rendered, I'm going to hop over here into After Effects and just grab our two uh, passes, and just drop them right in, and then we'll take them, and we'll just put them right here in our timeline. Uh, they're going to show up a little junky. Let me just correct them. I'm using a uh, linear workspace in my 3ds Max scene, so that's going to affect the way that these colors come through in After Effects, and we just need to preserve RGB. If we're using an EXR sequence, that would be no problem. It would just be stored right in there. So let's check out our sequence. All right, it's rendered. looks great. All we need to do is right-click on one of our RPF sequences and go to Keyframe Assistant, RPF camera import. And there you go. We now have a camera in our 3D scene. If you tumble this open, you'll see that we have position and rotation information on it. But we still need to get its focal length to match up. I'm going to pop back to max and go and select our camera. And you can see that we have a lens of 24.287 and a field of view of 45. To make sure our camera is correct in After Effects, I'm just going to double click right here and change this to 24.287 and tab over and hit that with 45. Now our camera is set. So let's get the animated position of that teapot and apply that to a null object. First, let's make a new null object and we'll set that to be a 3D object. Then back in 3D Studio Max, let's select the teapot and run the script. As you can see, it'll open up in this floater here. It'll automatically set itself to your frame range and have these channels selected. By clicking Export Animated Position, it'll open up a notepad file that has the animated keyframe data that After Effects can understand. Just go ahead and copy all of this. Go to After Effects and just paste this right onto my null object you'll see that our null has adopted the transforms from 3D Studio Max. Going a little bit bigger, and as I cycle through the sequence, you can see that it has, it has adopted the transforms, rotation, and scale. And you can see here that position, rotation, and scale information has been brought over. This information can also be pasted onto an RPF camera because you can see it still has the same uh, channels for the data. After you've set the focal length, this is a quick and easy way to update your camera. Another great thing about this is that you can quickly and easily get a position from 3D Studio Max into After Effects, and I'll show you how. If I just make a new null object, and again make it a 3D object, I'm going to pop over to 3D Studio Max and just make a point. Using the auto grid, I'll just click that somewhere on the surface. And you'll see that I now have my point helper right here. Using the transform tool, I'll just copy to clipboard. This will pop up, letting you know that the information has been copied over. Tab over to After Effects, and just paste. And you'll see that we have our point 
brought over into After Effects with all of the transforms applied. This is great for uh, really breaking down that barrier between 3D Studio Max and After Effects for when you want to populate a composite with various things that are in accurate space in your, from your 3D scene. If you're adding like little dust kicks or trees in the background, uh, lens flare, sun location, any of these things, it's really easy to just grab them and just drop them right into After Effects. You can go ahead and use the transform tools without having to bring in an RPF camera if you already have an accurate camera brought in from something else. You could also set up the compositor link through the state sets and bring things over this way quickly. Currently, this version of the script should work for uh, 3D Studio Max versions 9 and up and also work for After Effects versions 5, 5.5, and 6 that I've tested it on. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is actually in this keyframe data. So here we can see that we have header information up here at the top uh, with units per second. This is essentially the frame rate, which Max will retrieve from the scene. Um, these are some things that uh, newer versions of After Effects require for it to be in there. And then our transforms on each frame. If this is in the future and you are using a version of After Effects that is incompatible with this version of the exporter, I have added a custom formatting rollout down here. If you click on header, you can see here that you can add whatever you want to the header. And when you export, that information will be in there. So this lets you easily keep the script up to date without having to recode it every time. Same thing goes for the footer. Hey, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions or problems or whatever, uh, feel free to email me, and I'll see if there's anything I can do about it, uh, help you out. Um, thanks for watching.